But I wanted to ask you, what terrifies you about the notion that Jesus might be who the Bible actually says he is? He is the Alpha and the Omega. He holds the keys to life and death, to heaven and hell. If he is that person, would you ever turn your life over to him? If you truly believed he was, would you turn your life over to him? Well, if you truly believed that, you tell people that you love how to avoid the road to hell. You do it because you don't want them to burn. In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson, a well-known Canadian psychologist, engages with country music star John Rich, who consistently presses Peterson for a direct answer regarding his views on Jesus Christ. Later, we'll trace Peterson's journey from atheism to his current exploration of Christian faith. Please like this video to help it reach more people. I actually wrote down what you said, and I wondered if you'd let me quote you for a minute. Oh. Can I quote you in our, in your, it's your right interview. Ahead. Can go, I quote you? Okay. Hey man, go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> I appreciate that. This is Dr. Jordan Peterson here, a quote from him. Sometimes the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. And that seems to me oddly plausible. But I still don't know what to make of it, partly because it's too terrifying of a reality to fully believe. I don't know what would even happen to you if you fully believed it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So what struck me about that when I heard you say that was, was the terrified part. Because mm -hmm. to me, I would think it'd be the greatest thing in the world if Jesus is who the Bible says he is. If that is true, then you should go running straight to him because he controls heaven and hell. He created the universe. He's the alpha, the omega. He is, he is the way, the truth, and the life. He's every answer you ever wanted to have. Every answer to every question. He is the ultimate he, he loves you more than anybody will ever love you. He created you. you. You are his creation. The last thing he wants to see happen to you is for you to go and follow the other way and wind up in eternity separated from him. So I, I, had, I know it's your interview, but I wanted to ask you, what terrifies you about the notion that Jesus might be who the Bible actually says he is? Well, it's been, as you pointed out, a number of years since I said those things, and I know more and understand more than I did when I said those words. Um, I've, I've reconceptualized my perspective, I suppose, or deepened it, partly as a consequence of writing these new books, because I, I have three books finished, and one of them is coming out soon, and they're all analysis of the biblical narratives. This is something we can talk about in relationship to what happened to you after you decided to leave the confines of the safe confines, let's say, of the music industry. The religious injunction, the deepest religious injunction, is to have exactly that catastrophe of adventure. And there's no real limit to that. And that's part of what's terrifying. You know, you, you said if the terror wasn't there, that holy terror in a sense, you wouldn't have had any compunctions about giving up your contractual relationships and the financial stability and the fame that that offered, right? You already had that. It's, there's, a, there's a terror in letting that go, let's say, and only doing what, what would you say, what you're commanded to do or what you're invited to do by the spirit of the truth. But the payoff is an adventure that's so disproportionately greater than whatever you would have gained by staying with your, what would you say, <laughs> your hedonistic comfort that they're not even in the same universe. Right. And that is, it's the kind of terror. And so... So what's the That's, bigger gamble, though? I mean, what's the bigger terror? Is the bigger terror well, that, is that, the question. that in, in this very temporary body that we sit in, this very short span of time we have to live in it, that we don't, that he's going to take over and he's going to burn and cut and move things off of us. And by the way, for everything he burns and cut, cuts off, he adds back, by the way. Okay. That he, he adds things on where he more. cut things off. Oh, yeah, more, much more multiples of it. Is it a bigger terror to undergo that process 
or to roll all the way through your life. And the second your heart stops and your eyes open up, you're standing in front of him and you knew the truth and you rejected the truth. And now what? Now he says, depart from me, depart from me, I never knew you. And then it's eternal terror. Then it's eternal terror forever and ever. And there's no coming back. You don't get a second chance at that. That's the ultimate terror. So I would, I would ask you one more question. If, if, use the word if here for you, if Jesus is truly who the Bible says he is, he is the creator. He is the one who exists and creates existence, which is how he's defined. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He holds the keys to life and death, to heaven and hell. If he is that person, would you ever turn your life over to him? If you truly believed he was, would you turn your life over to him? Well, if you truly believed that, turning your life over to him under those conditions would be exactly the same as believing it. Belief isn't, as you already pointed out, belief isn't a set of statements about what you believe to be true. It's a way of living. Well, but I'm asking outlined well, what that way of living is. Well, but I'm asking you as just as as one of the most, I would say one of the smartest guys in the world, one of the most intellectual people alive today. It's why people watch you. Someone like yourself, if you if you became absolutely convinced, yes, that's real. Wow. It, it, it is terrifying. It is terrible. But you said if you told him. I am turning my life over to you. Do what you will with me. And you really did that. If, if you were, if if you were willing to do that, um, I already man, did that. What a situation! Long time ago, you did. I did that a long time ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so how is it that? How is it that? I know the truth sets you free. Yeah, I understand. So, that. so, so in your life, in your life, it's not the doctor calling the shots. Not when I'm oriented properly. What orients you? Holy terror. Look, I'm, I'm trying to say the things that I believe serve the truth. Like, and I have reason for that, like, because I know, that, I know what the alternative is. If the alternative is bleak, like bleaker than you can imagine. And so step carefully. That's my presumption. And hope and pray that you're careful enough to walk the straight, narrow path. But it's, but it's impossible. You can't do that. I can't do it. You can't do it. Oh, I understand. You know? I understand what you mean. I don't take any issue with what you've said. Yeah. No, I don't I don't think you do. And I'm, I'm not trying to have an issue. I'm just... Spe- no, I, I understand. I, I've, stu- I've studied what you've been saying. And I know you look at the Bible, it seems at least very metaphorically and, and very intellectually, you look at it in, in those kinds of terms. And... At the end of the day, it's not, it's not a metaphor and it's not intellectualism. Like when when you die and you see him, what's he going to say to you? What are you going to say to him? I mean, that's the ultimate question that everybody watching this interview is going to have to deal with. Everybody. It says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee, including John Rich and Jordan Peterson and the devil himself and everybody else. Every knee is going to have to bow. And so whether you believe that or not doesn't change the fact that that is what is going to happen. And I, I, I happen to believe, because it says it in the scripture, that the Lord reveals himself to every man. Every man knows it. He says, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in with him. I'll sit down with him. I'll dine with him. I'll have dinner with him and he with me. And so you hear him knocking on that door and you walk up, you open it and you let him in. That is what that means. You have invited him into your house. Let's call your body. This is my house. I invite him in. He sits down. He becomes, he's living in my house now. That's what that means. It also says he won't knock forever. He will not knock forever. If you, re, if you, you reject know, you him. You said you experienced that. Yeah. You experienced that when you felt abandoned. Yep. Yep. Uh, he, he won't knock forever. <laughs> At some point, if you reject him long enough, it says he'll just turn you over to your desires. and go, well, we gave it a good shot. Move on. And brother, you don't want to get to that point. So anybody watching this, if you feel him, you feel him knocking at the door, open the door. 
From Peterson's response, it seems that the fear of surrendering control over his life and potentially letting go of worldly pursuits holds him back from embracing faith in Jesus and accepting him as Lord and Savior. We can't help but contrast Peterson's sentiment with that of Zacchaeus, who was willing to give up worldly possessions because he had found someone far greater and more fulfilling than riches, Jesus. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Luke 19, verse 8. Undeniably, Jordan Peterson has journeyed through several phases in his understanding of faith, God, and Christianity. Early in his life, Peterson identified as an atheist, influenced by his scientific and psychological studies. The highest place is the divine place, and we could make that a matter of definition. Well, what should be in the divine place? I would say we characterize that using fiction. And so we could say that in the highest sense, God is the ultimate fictional character. And then we're trying to characterize his nature as that which should be emulated that unites us psychologically and socially. However, by the mid-2010, he began publicly expressing interest in philosophical and religious themes, particularly concerning truth and meaning. I would say, and I have said this before, that I act as if God exists and that I'm terrified that he might. (laughs) God, yes or no? Why not take on this question of the existence of God? Because it's not something to reduce to a soundbite, fundamentally. But your lectures are two hours long. This is true, but when you're talking about the most important questions that people have ever asked, then two hours isn't very long. Apparently, people will watch them. So I'm not prepared to say things in any other way than I've already said them. It isn't obvious what belief means. People think that what they believe is what they say they believe. I don't believe that. I believe that what people believe is what they act out. And so I said, I act as if God exists. That's a sufficient statement as far as I'm concerned. Now, what's the old saying? By their fruits ye shall know them. It's it's a matter of action and a matter of commitment. It's not a matter of me parading out my explicit statements about a metaphysical reality that's virtually impossible to comprehend. In 2015, Peterson gained widespread attention with his lectures on biblical stories, examining them as psychological and archetypal truths rather than literal religious doctrine. He described the Bible as the precondition for the manifestation of truth. And so it isn't that the Bible is true. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth, which makes it way more true than just true. It's a whole different kind of true. And I think this is, I think this is not only literally the case, factually, I think it can't be any other way. It's the only way we can solve the problem of perception. In his 2018 book, 12 Rules for Life and Antidote to Chaos, Peterson explores the importance of values, responsibility, and order, often referencing biblical stories as metaphorical truths. He said, It's not that I believe in God, but I act as if he exists. This statement highlighted his cautious approach to faith, acknowledging the ethical framework provided by Christianity without fully embracing traditional belief. Around 2020, After a period of severe health challenges, Peterson's reflections on faith deepened. He spoke more openly about Jesus and the transformative power of the Bible. In one emotional interview, he admitted, I don't know what would happen if you fully let yourself believe, expressing the profound struggle between his scientific background and his developing faith. His perspectives often connect the teachings of Jesus to psychological resilience, personal growth, and the ultimate purpose of human life. There's a sense in which it doesn't matter because there's still a historical story. And so what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived plus a myth. And in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that, but I don't know. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief and I don't (laughs) understand it. Like, because I've seen... Sometimes the objective world and the narrative world touch. You know, that's union synchronicity. And I've seen that many times in my own life. 
And so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. You know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real, like we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world, but the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. But I don't know what to, and that seems to me oddly plausible, but well, I still don't know what to make of it. It's too, it, partly because it's too terrifying a reality to fully believe. I don't even know what would happen to you if you fully believed it. By 2022, Peterson began speaking more directly about the transformative impact of Christ's teachings and the importance of belief. He conveyed that Christianity provides a moral compass and a foundation for Western civilization's values. In his lecture titled, Message to the Christian Churches, he urged religious communities to re-engage young men, suggesting that without Christianity's grounding influence, many feel lost in modern society. There's a sanctimonious authority that goes along with that that's the wrong tone. It's more like... You know, I don't know how you lay it out properly, but you tell people that you love how to avoid the road to hell. And you don't do that because you're shaking your finger at them or because you're a moral authority. You do it because you don't want them to burn. And I think there's too much of the moral authority still in the church and not enough of the you know, the love that helps people avoid the fire. Peterson's journey reflects a progression from skepticism to reverence, marked by the understanding that Christianity's messages resonate with human psychology and the search for meaning. While Peterson has yet to openly declare a specific faith alignment, his exploration of Christianity as a source of moral and existential guidance is evident in his recent lectures, writings, and interviews. Here's my humble opinion as to the spiritual state of Jordan Peterson. I believe that he's sitting under the terrifying weight of God's law and consequently feeling the burden of his own sins. This is what happened to Pilgrim in John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. In the great allegory, Pilgrim meets Mr. Worldly Wise Man who deceives him into thinking that he can be delivered from his burden of sin through the moral law rather than through trusting in Christ. Evangelist meets Pilgrim as he stops under Mount Sinai, which incidentally flashed with fire. Evangelist then directs him from the law to the cross, where his burden of sin rolls off his back and he finds everlasting life. So if God opened the door for me to speak to this precious man, I'd point him away from the law to the cross. Ray Comfort's words capture where Dr. Peterson currently stands in his journey to discover God and pursue a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. While Peterson is no longer where he once was in his views on faith and God, he has not yet fully embraced Jesus as his Lord, Savior, and Redeemer. That's the reason why you should commit him to your daily prayers. Help us share biblical truth by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Don't forget to enable the bell icon for notifications on our latest videos. God bless you.